Community College Board of Trustees meeting to order. I will ask uh, our Academic Senate President, Karen Kane, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Please place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, could we have a roll call vote, please? Irma Archuleta. Present. Virginia Baxter. Here. Jeff Kellogg. Here. Doug Otto. Here. And Sunny Zia. Here. And agenda item 2.4, report on closed session. There were no, there's no items to report out. Um, uh, 2.5. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the April 26th regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Archuleta. Uh, roll call vote. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Okay. Uh, agenda item 2.6, introductions and special announcements. Uh, Superintendent President Oakley. Yes, I just have a couple of brief announcements. First of all, uh, we do have one retiree that we want to recognize this evening, although he could not attend. I do want to make sure and um, uh, uh, publicly uh, thank him for his service to Long Beach City College. So we have um, Anthony Gargano, who's a professor of English, who oh. served the district for 28 years uh, and will be retiring. Uh, so... Um, uh, I do want to publicly take this moment to thank him for his service, uh, for all of his years of service, and for touching so many of our students um, while he taught here at Long Beach City College. So please join me in a round of applause for Anthony on his uh, <laughs> retirement. Um, finally, I just want to take a moment uh, before I lose him to recognize uh, Coach uh, Casey Crook, who... Uh, Took us to the playoffs again this year. Unfortunately, we hit a roadblock in Bakersfield, um, but uh, a great job again, Coach, and uh, please congratulate the team on our behalf. Okay, 2.7, reordering of the agenda. We are going to move at uh, our student trustees' request, item 9.3, his report to immediately follow 2.8, which is the student body president's report. Um, and uh, now we have 2.8, and uh, it's my understanding that the student body president is communicating with us today by rumor. And so uh, his report will be given by our- I'm sure he's in class. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was the rumor. Uh, so our student trustee will give the student body president's report and then his report. Yeah. So speaking on behalf of Dal, our ASU president, um, he unfortunately wasn't able to make it to the meeting. Um, I think he's used up all his absences for class at this point in the year. Um, but basically he wanted to uh, say that we are having elections currently for our elected positions, which are ASB uh, president, LAC, and PCC vice president, our secretary, treasurer, and our student trustee during um, this uh, during this upcoming year. So elections are going on right now. You can vote online. It's open to any student body member, any student member in general. Um, just need your, your PeopleSoft login and your password, and it's, it's pretty simple there. Um, we'll be having booths for those of you, for those students who aren't able to maybe vote at home. Um, we'll be on campus throughout the day. Today we're, we're at uh, the Pacific Coast campus all day, and uh, tomorrow and when, and tomorrow and Thursday we'll be at both campuses. Um, and voting closes on May, t May 12th, so this upcoming Thursday, is that Thursday? Yes. Um, and then uh, he wanted to mention that ASB has given out about $16,000 in ASB grants. So they were giving out, it was a competitive little grant program where a lot of clubs and organizations applied for those grants on campus. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to give everyone a grant. Uh, we gave out about $16,000 in total increments. So that was really awesome there. And hopefully that benefits the students as a whole. 
And uh, appointed applications on our ASB cabinet are being considered at the moment. Uh, applications deadline is May 12th for any student that's interested. So we have a lot of representatives on there, representative of student services, representative of academic affairs, representative of legislative affairs, and so on and so forth. Um, but all those positions, if any student is interested in seeking some leadership roles in the ASB or student government, um, those applications are due May 12th. And you can contact him or myself for any other further questions. And then that concludes his report, and I'll just follow up with mine. That's okay. Sure. Yeah, let's, um, okay. So I moved up my agenda report because I can't stay throughout the entirety of the meeting. Um, last night I had a family member that passed away, so um, I'm kind of handling some things at home. So this is a time to be with family and to agree with them. Um, my family just left this morning out of the country, so I'll be joining them a little bit after. Um, but uh, there, it's, it's never a good time when family passes, and this is just unfortunately a really bad time for everyone. Um, but there's a lot of events happening. Uh, we're still having our town hall tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, today it was canceled. I wasn't able to make it. So it's going to be an informal discussion with students and um, a bunch of students and uh, hopefully some administration, maybe some teachers, faculty, staff, things like that. And basically, it's an open discussion on what we can do to improve campus life for not only students, but to everyone as a whole. Um, that's still going to happen tomorrow at the Liberal Arts Campus. It's from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the E-Building Nordic Lounge for those who are interested in stopping by and seeing some discussions about what really is the idea of student success and what students think student success really is. Um, and uh, there's a, an event happening on Friday that I'm going to be a panelist on. I'm not sure if I'll still be able to, but it's a really awesome event. It's a Student Transit Pass Advocacy Summit. It's hosted by a couple student leaders from across the state, and um, it's going to be held at LA Trade Tech. It's from about 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're going to have some awesome student leaders coming out and really expressing some interest in the importance of transit passes for not only the CC system, but maybe the K-12 through system and different institutions as a whole. So um, it's really going to, it's going to be an awesome event. We'll have a bunch of student leaders. We're having the LA Trade Tech president come out. We're having some legislators come out. Really awesome key people there. Um, but thanks for the reordering of the agenda. I, I wouldn't do it any other case, and I hope to look back at the meeting and seeing such a productive meeting as we've been having before in the live streaming here. But uh, thank you, and hopefully you guys have a great evening. We are sorry for your loss and uh, condolences. For uh, 2.9 public comments on agenda items. Uh, we have no one signed up, so we will move on to 3.1 which is the 2015 annual report on campus crime. Who's gonna be giving this report? Uh, I will turn it over to Vice President Anne-Marie Gable. Thank you, President Oakley. And I'm going to turn this over to, we have uh, Commander Cook here with the Long Beach Police Department who's gonna be covering uh, the presentation. Um, we also in the audience have Brendan Hayes and Margie Padrone, so if there's Questions that come up, we have a slew of people that can help answer them. So I'll turn it over to you, Commander Cook. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, report to you the uh, campus crime report for 2015. And again, uh, if you didn't catch that, my name is Joel Cook. I'm a commander with the police department, and the uh, men and women that uh, work here work directly under me. Uh, so there's been some new requirements for uh, 2015. Uh, some, some things that have changed, uh, I know that we've been working through them uh, in a partnership to get them uh, out in, uh, into the public format. Uh, I'll pick a couple of these to uh, go over, but uh, I'm not going to read uh, through all of this. Um, the, new, uh, the new requirements basically uh, require you uh, to comply with certain campus safety and security requirements, uh, and you do and it's a condition of your federal financial aid and Cal Grant funding. Um, I'm sure all of you remember fondly uh, Julie Pryor. She came to me uh, just before her retirement, and uh, I was a newly promoted commander. I'm still pretty new. Uh, and she came to me with this, and we've been working through this. So all these, all these things are, are being worked through and, and pretty much in place right now. And ultimately, it is both of our goals to provide you a safer college campus. Um, Awareness and prevention, I'm sure all of you know, but uh, the college community, you're always educating them on the awareness and how important it is for all of us to always be aware of our surroundings all the time when we're coming and going to school, uh, both of, of your faculty and staff and obviously the, 
the students and their parents and anybody who comes around the campus, I would tell you that that's important in your daily life. No matter where you're going, you need to be aware of your surroundings and what's going on. So that continues to be a, a major precept of ours. Um, it is driven home. We do uh, go through it uh, throughout the year. I know that uh, my staff makes presentations to a variety of community organizations and even to classrooms, as they're asked to do. Um, they go through personal safety, uh, the tips that are listed here on how not to become a victim. In fact, I would tell you that it's probably uh, pretty much uh, bread and butter for most of our policemen as they talk about the same things in community meetings throughout the city. We jumped ahead here a bit. Um, I would like to tell you that it is pretty much uh, it's been taken up by a number of Southern California cities, but very much so here. We do believe that if you do see or say, see or, excuse me, hear or see something that you really need to call us. We need as much participation from the community, the community on campus, the community outside campus. We need all of you to basically keep us informed about what's going on and so that we can basically provide as much safety and, and support to you guys as we can. A little bit about student discipline. I'd like to let you know that uh, although we participate in, in times when you need a police response for student discipline, that by and large, um, we would like that to stay in your realm and your administrative process, that we would really not like to bring the auspice of true law enforcement to, to bear unless it's really something that fits nicely in our, in our bucket of law enforcement. So to the extent that we can, um, we assist in summary suspensions. We assist in enforcing the student code of conduct. Um, we assist in referring people to the, to the proper place to be. Um, and we participate in conduct hearings. Uh, for those of you that, that are keeping track of such a thing, 47 students have been referred to the Director of Student Discipline and Student Life. Um, new this year for this report is the implementation of the Behavioral Invention Team. I think you refer to it as the BIT Team, B-I-T. Um, a majority of educational institutions do have teams that are just like your Behavioral um, Intervention Team. I've participated in some of those things prior to my becoming a commander here. I was a lieutenant in charge of the Police Department's Mental Evaluation Team. So I bumped into this team setting as part of my mental health duties for the mental health um, enforcement team that used to work for me. So I was uh, a part of uh, Southern California effort, if you will, to actually put some of these teams together. We have a work group that meets about quarterly. Uh, it's headed by the FBI, a bunch of other people participate in it. And it's a time for all of us to get together and talk about things. Um, Julie Pryor had uh, started talking to me about it about the time that I was still a lieutenant and she started uh, bringing some people with this. And this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the outgrowth of that. I think it's a very strong program and I think that you'll see some true benefit for it. Um, for those of you that don't know, the members are uh, the Vice President of Student Support Services, the Interim Dean of Student Affairs, Director of Student Discipline and Student Life, Director of Human Resources, Manager of Human Resources, uh, Academic, Director of Business Support Services, Manager of uh, Business Support Service, Environmental Health and Safety, and uh, Lieutenant Davenport, who could not be here today because of uh, a family obligation, but the campus police is represented as well. As far as Emergency Preparedness and Safety Advisory Committee, um, we've reviewed and updated evacuation guidelines for persons with disabilities, uh, recommended assessment of all door lock and capabilities, if that is uh, something that's an outgrowth of some things lately that we've seen on the news. Uh, you've reviewed various signage options on campus related to safety and security. And uh, lastly, evaluated various emergency phone applications for personal devices. Um, the committee meets quarterly. As far as your actual crime stats, um, compared to uh, 2014, you have uh, 183 incidents versus uh, 174 reported incidents. That number reflects a 5% increase in your reported incidents between those two years. Uh, for Pacific Coast Campus, uh, 2014 to 2015, and that uh, number earlier was LAC, I believe. Yes. For PCC, it's uh, 82 for 2014 and 89 in 2015, which represents a 9% increase to you. 
Liberal, and, liberal Arts and Pacific Coast campuses combined, uh, 256 in 2014 and 272, or a 6% increase in 2015. Uh, a graph of uh, where you guys are uh, related to years past. Um, although you've uh, seen increases, um, you are uh, doing quite well, I would say, to uh, some years past. A uh, breakdown as to uh, category for the different, different campuses. Um, you can see that a majority of uh, your increase is driven uh, by other, um, followed closely by petty theft. And I would tell you that a significant amount of your petty thefts are bicycle thefts. Um, basically, uh, someone's coming and cutting the bicycle locks and uh, going off with the bikes. A second to that would be uh, unattended property. Somebody leaves something on a bench or a chair or in a classroom and uh, goes away and realizes, oh my goodness, I left whatever. They go back, it's gone. Um, and as far as grand theft goes, which is uh, not nearly a close third, but that would be the next one, uh, typically unattended laptops. And ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, that applies to both your campuses, both LAC and ECC. For arrests for both campuses, uh, five felony arrests. Uh, and they broke down uh, in one or more of the following categories of uh, outstanding warrant, parole violation, or burglary. And uh, one of those arrests was a student. For misdemeanor arrests or citations, there was 19. They're broken down as follows. Um, four trespassing, two warrants, uh, four lewd conduct, Restroom violations were three. Uh, one person uh, was cited for littering. Possession of paraphernalia, one. Possession of stolen property, one. A false bomb threat and two batteries. Of all of those, seven were students. If, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the panel, you're wondering what other reported incidents are, uh, these are they. Uh, administrative reports. Grand theft reports, petty theft, lost stolen property reports, found property, traffic accidents that we take, annoying calls or emails, vandalism, and stored vehicles comprise a category of other. For both your campuses combined, parking citations issued was 8,419 parking citations. Calls for service that we answered for you was 1,302. Are there any questions from uh, the panel? I, this may be a, a silly question, but what is a restroom violation? Ma'am, I couldn't tell you without pulling up the citation and telling you exactly okay. what was going on. Okay. I have some questions. Sure. If Trustee Pastor is finished. Um, thank you for that report. Um, <laughs> without being specific as to relation to the citation in general, that could be uh, a ma male using a female restroom or uh, some type of food contact taking place in there, like slipping or something. Okay. You could run that down. That would give you an idea. Okay. Thanks, Brendan. Okay. So um, you touched on other uh, briefly. I'm sorry. Could you uh, reiterate what those? Uh, items are um, and do we provide an analysis beyond just the statistics is it possible to get some sort of analysis or why we had an increase in in other no in general that was my I wove my question in uh, the first one uh, I apologize um, my, one of my questions is what is other um, and the second question is uh, if it's possible to get an analysis of why we think it's been up or what are some of the things we're doing to mitigate them um, on the ground. I know our superintendent has been giving us some reports, uh, but if you could perhaps speak to it, I'd appreciate it. And I have other questions. Okay. Well, to what other is, um, other is slide 15, and I backed up mine, so I'm not sure it backed up yours. but. Yes, it uh, did. There's a variety. Of, I'm sorry. It did. We're backed up. It, we're back. 
Um, so there's a variety of reports that, that we take for, uh, for you guys, the administration. Uh, those are the incident reports. Uh, and then the rest of what comprises the category of other grand theft, petty theft, lost stolen property, found property, traffic accidents, annoying calls or emails, vandalism, stored vehicles, or any other document that we might fill out or fulfill for the college district will go into other. So, so it's anything that's basically not enumerated in that chart that was uh, broken out there. And uh, what do we mean by, um, I think it was uh, stored vehicles, what is that citation? Well, a stored vehicle would be one that, say, maybe is reported stolen and driven onto your campus and in the course of work, uh, one of my officers finds it, runs the plate, it comes back stolen, um, and we store it, we tow it away, and then we call the owner and we tell him, hey, we found your car, come to the tow yard and pick it up. Or, um, if there's an accident, and... In the course of that accident, one or more of the vehicles is unable to be driven away from the scene. We can store it for the owner at our police tow yard, and that again is a stored vehicle. Okay, and then as far as an analysis on the, of the numbers or um, any kind of insight or foresight on why we're up? Um, I don't have that. I can pledge to you that I would have staff look at the prior years compared to this year and see why the category of other is greater, right? Out of all of the things that, that make other, I can find out where your greatest increase is, if that's what we're I, asking I'm not about. interested in just other. I'm interested in totality of the reporting because it's, uh, it's increased. Okay. Um, so for both, um, it, it includes other. Um, if you could please um, help me understand or have some sort of an analysis of the stats, um, that would be fantastic. As, okay. Uh, I did the numbers, and I think we're averaging about 23 traffic citations a day and three and a half public safety calls a day. That's based on the 365 days a year. Okay. Um, I'm an engineer, so I have to do the math. Um, that seems rather high, uh, and I just wanted to make sure uh, I have an understanding and what, what are we doing to cut these numbers down? What's our plan of action? We're talking about the rise? Yes. Well, I know one of the things that your staff's been working on for a little bit now is there's a, a campus camera system that's coming. I think, uh, I know on the PD side that we are pretty excited about that prospect because that's going to allow us and you to have a better idea and probably impact a lot of these, for instance, bicycle thefts where right now we don't know who's coming on your campus and taking these bicycles. And your furtherance of this camera project is going to allow us at a point in time to be able to, once completed, uh, say we were to have one of these thefts again at a particular place or a place that we have the same sort of behavior occurring all the time, that we would be able to look through your video, identify a suspect, and make a thing. So that's going to be huge for us, number one. Number two, um, I think we have to double down on our message to the population that works and learns here. We need to, a great majority of uh, your stats are driven by unattended property. Um, and so you can make a significant uh, dent. We all can make a significant dent in those things by hardening our posture in that, getting the message out, using the Viking, using uh, social media tools that you guys use, some of the alert messages. Um, in fact, uh, one of the contracts that I oversee is Long Beach Transit, and, and I don't, have any problem talking to them about using some of the bus routes that actually facilitate some of the traffic in and out of both of your campuses and around here to carry that message. It's just as applicable as it is here as it is for the students of Long Beach uh, Unified School District as it is for Cal State Long Beach. So um, we talk about those kinds of things all the time and I, and I think that there'd be great value in making an effort to double down on the public message of you always need to be aware where you're going to be. You need to be aware of your belongings, and you, to the greatest extent that you can, need to make sure that you take all the steps that you can to make sure that your car is safe and it's locked and it's in a good place and your bicycle is locked with a very strong lock and in a good place. And then your movement forward in this camera project, I think, would be 
ideal for us to be able to really, you know, be able to go back and get these investigative clues that we need to go and really impact some of these things. Because we've seen, even on the city side, that there's a very small number of people that are driving a very large piece of the crime. And that if we have this piece of the puzzle, this camera system, and it's up and it's running and it's functional and we can go back and look at things, that that's gonna help us identify some people. And then when we're able to identify those people, and if we have the evidence to arrest them and prosecute them, that I think that that's gonna be, make a big impact for you guys. I think what it's gonna be good. What about warn, uh, warning signage? Do you think that would be a good idea to make sure that, that it's posted and folks know a uh, report on any kind of incidents that they see or potential or possible um, uh, you know, incidents that um, are a threat of it? I, I wouldn't want to talk to the posture that maybe some of these people have been working through on your end, but I know that the city in places that we have cameras has signage that says that we have cameras and that you can be seen and that it's reported. And it's been preventative? I don't know that it's necessarily been preventative. It's certainly preventative to the people that are worried about doing something wrong. I think the people that don't really have that fear, um, it's good information for them. I mean, maybe it, uh, maybe it dis deters an element of the population, but I think at some point in time, even, even with signage, I think a lot of people uh, nowadays view the signage as just kind of like, uh, well, I know a few people that have like an ADT security sign in front of their house and they don't have a contract with ADT, so they're just kind of hoping that the sign, uh, the sign that I have a burglar alarm is, is enough to, to drive you away kind of a thing. So I, I think there's a measure of it, but I don't think it's going to be a 100%. Okay. And uh, lastly, uh, what is a non-forcible sex offense? Uh, that would be one where they might have the two parties, for instance, and I'm not referring to any of the stats we that you have here, but an example would be consent to have sex in a place that they shouldn't be having sex, i.e. the restroom, as Mr. Uh, Mr. Hayes was referring to in the earlier kind of question. Okay, so these statistics that you've provided um, for 2015, is it for all campus community members, including students and everyone? So this I see was, one. This was anything that occurred on your campuses. Okay. Great, well, I'd, I'd certainly like to see us move towards getting more preventative and making sure we mitigate the rise in the public safety incidents. So I agree. I'm counting on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> The security report. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from board members? In that case, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, Four point one certification of election of members of the board of trustees. Okay. Moved by trustee. Um, Kellogg, second by Trustee Baxter. Zia. I'm sorry. Zia. Zia, you're right. Um, the action is that the board, board of Trustees accept the results of the consolidated primary nominating election held in the city of Long Beach on Tuesday, April 12th, for two offices, two and four, the Board of Trustees, the Long Beach Community College District has uh, submitted. Any questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Aye. Sorry. 4.2 uh, Resolution Classified School Employee Week. Uh, entertain a motion. So, so moved. moved. Trustee Baxter and who was it over here? Yeah. Trustee Zia. Um, this is a, uh, the action is that the Board of Trustees adopt resolution number 051016A declaring the week of May 15th to 21st as classified school employee week at the Long Beach Community College District as submitted. Any comments, questions? I, I have a comment. Um, I just wanted to give kudos to uh, Thomas Hamilton who's in the uh, 
room today and our Annie Ingle and our wonderful classified staff and for the great job that they do. And I just had a question to see if uh, we're going to be doing anything special during this week for the classified staff. <coughs> President Oakley, are there any activities scheduled for classified week? <coughs> 